maybe they were like the mo- warrior monks. Did you say monks? I, I did. Monks, <laughs> monks, monks, monkeys. Monk. They're warrior monkeys. That's racist, man. The monks. <laughs> they are the warrior monks. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of dum, The Law dum, Offices dum, of dum, Quibble, dum, Squabble, dum, and uh, Picker on uh, this March 16th, 2022, the day before St. Patrick's Day. Um, literally two years to the day when I lost my karaoke business and uh, it has never recovered. So <laughs> today we have a brand new client, our client is five-fingered exploding spleen technique. Behold, trapped in a hellscape of their own invention, socially unaware old white men bound by the pretense of being fake lawyers yet knowing no law, no exquisite Latin terminology, they are inexplicably compelled to quibble over minutia, squabble over triflings, and bicker like those who value their backyards far too highly without even knowing the difference between an easement and an alleyway. At this very moment, you have entered the heart of the law offices of quibble, squabble, and bicker. Let's get started. It's St. Patty's Day. We've got green beer. It's beer that's green. Green is the beer that we have. Green beer, green beer, green beer. Now selling at your local Safe Mart grocery store. At Safe Mart, it's a Safe Mart. Come to Safe Mart and be safe. That was... (laughs) Green beer. (laughs) That's our fake sponsor for today. I was not too inspired. (laughs) You could have had a follow-up commercial for the special mop that cleans up the green vomit (laughs) the next day. (laughs) Or the sawdust. I don't even understand that whole concept of green beer anyway. Like, why anybody would want to drink that stuff. It's a novelty. Yeah, but don't they know? I mean, like, what is the green? (laughs) It's done, right? Right. Is it, well, I guess I, I would think it would be like food grade dye that they put in there, but uh, ma- I'm imagine what drinking it does. green beer tomorrow How night. I'm coats your beer. insides, you know. If I go to your show tomorrow night and they have green, there beer, is I'm no gonna... if, Greg. There is no if. It shall be done. Whatever, Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> there is no if. There is only do. I did not say there is no try, but I, <laughs> you know, I've done that to you before as well, so. There's yes. no try. There's do or do not. It shall be done. It is what needs to be. So for anybody who's paying attention on TikTok, I think there's three people actually watching on TikTok right now, uh, running a podcast live. It's me and Greg with the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. If you go to our YouTube channel at Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker on YouTube, and if you just search Law Offices of Quibble, you should be able to find us. Like I said, right now we're running things live, and uh, I will take questions for anybody who chooses to uh, make questions. And since Not- they can't hear me, I'm just going to say TikTok's stupid. Stop <laughs> watching TikTok so much. Well, you know. You're idiots. If they come on YouTube, they will have heard that. But uh, as far as I know, nobody's oh, watching on YouTube. But anyway, so let's uh, we, we've done our fake sponsor for today. So I guess we'll just let, go straight into our client, which is Five Finger Exploding Spleen Technique. Which essentially will be a discussion about martial arts, which Greg and I are not experts on by any stretch of the imagination. Um, There's so so many. You know, growing up, I always thought of martial arts as strictly like kung fu, right? But, you know, in technically the term martial arts encompasses any military activity, I think, that uh, kill people. Well, yeah, in the friendship savate, it's not just an Asian thing. Well, I mean, uh, they have swords, too, and they stab people with them. That's like a martial art. You know, fencing is a martial art. Isn't still considered a martial art, though? I mean... Well, here's the thing like... that... Here's an interesting thing I found out when I was looking this up. is like, I realized that I didn't really know where the word martial comes from. Right? Do you know where it martial. comes from, Greg? Well, it's the, it's the same martial law... Um, yeah, martial law does that change you knowing what the word martial means? Marshall Matt Dillon. <laughs> so Marshall, M A R T I A L. I'm trying to think of the Latin root. What Mar- it comes from the Latin? It means arts what? of Mars, Mars for the Mars. Roman god of war. Yeah, right? Marshall. Yeah. Exactly, but you know, you never think of that. So it has to do with war. It's like learning how to fight war. Yeah. So I think what's it's. 
it, the term martial arts got so used for kung fu and then karate and that type of thing. So it got more associated with that word about people thinking that it really has to do with like sword play. Yeah. So I've recently been taking Tai Chi and I never thought of Tai Chi as a martial art. But that's exactly what it is. It's just the really slow moving martial art. It is a meditative art. Until you speed it up. And then it becomes like a legitimate martial art. But you could find a tree sloth with Tai Chi or a turtle, a tortoise. <laughs> it is a way to defend blow. yourself against fresh fruit. <laughs> <laughs> what was that from? I know that's, that that's Monty Python. Yes. <laughs> Come at me with a banana. If he comes at you with a cantaloupe, shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> that, you shall defend yourself from a man with a handful of grapes. You but eat guess, each grape one by one, thus so, disarming him. Then shoot him. So technically, if like General Westmoreland was talking about his strategy of napalming villages of Vietnam, you could say that's the martial arts. It is a martial art. It's a way to fight a war. Are you like autistic or something, Greg? You're like going back and forth right now on the screen. Did you get yourself like a rocking chair or something? No, but you remember when you were in school, you'd tip in your chair and your teacher would say, stop doing that. Today, Greg is on a boat. (laughs) He's just rocking back and forth on his boat while we do the podcast. No, I'm on my sex chair, my sex hammock. (laughs) Your martial art hammock. So it makes you wonder, like, how many martial arts there are. I guess there are as many as there are different societies or, or um, countries yeah. and cultures that develop their own way of fighting. I so boxed. what would you say are the most well-known? I mean, I said Kung Fu. I think Kung Fu is, like, way and up there. Karate is probably right up there, too. Karate but, and Kung Fu. Right. There's Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, you know, but that what, seems like a lesser one. Like it seems like it was the big. You no, know, it seems probably... like it. But after seeing a number of different um, Ultimate Fighting Championship type programs, it seems that the jujitsu practitioners are the ones who are most effective at winning those fighting championship mm. because it combines grappling as well as kicking and and, oh. and, and pinching bottoms and whatever else so... they do. <laughs> Pinching bottoms, so it, it mixes <laughs> wrestling with like Asian martial arts, it, like yeah. But there's, there's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which is apparently the more popular one, and I don't yeah. know what the difference is with the. And there's Brazilian also what's the jiu-jitsu? Brazilian one that's based on dancing, uh, capoeira. Uh, it's like capoeira. A martial, like, capoeira. Capoeira, like yeah, that's like whenever they're doing like their little somersaults, you kick them on the crotch. Because you, you know they're going to spit a little bit, so that's the perfect opportunity to just like nail them on the crotch. Oh, okay. spinning was, in front of you. I thought it was based on the fact that West Side Story was very popular in Brazil. And so <laughs> that was they based their martial arts on that. <laughs> so West, hey, Side, West Side Story hey, is a boy. martial art show, is what you're well, saying. Well, they are. They, they're doing this dancing, fighting style. It doesn't seem very effective. It seems like it wouldn't hurt. They're just kind of twirling around. So according but, but, to Wikipedia here, they've they've broken things up for unarmed combat, unarmed martial arts. And that's what we think of as martial arts, right? That's what we... Well, there's you know, armed... Well, you know, a lot of those unarmed martial arts sometimes have weapons in them as well. Like, like nunchucks. Like have those... Nunchucks. Yeah. And, you know, I've never understood why they're called nunchucks, because that's not what their name is. It's like another one of those words where we've bastardized it because we're too lazy to say the actual word. Well, does it, it's spelled nunchakas, right? Yeah, something like that. Like so nunch, it's close. Nunchaku. No, nunchaku. it's not numchucks, though. I didn't say mu- numchucks. I said nun. <laughs> They're nunchucks. They're chucks that don't exist. <laughs> There's, are those nunchucks? I don't see any. Wait, they are, it is nun, right? Yeah. I thought and, you said, I said num. Like but a lot of people do say numchucks, though. Oh, they do. Say, yeah, they people. do. It's like like what I'm saying. It's but like, that's funny because they do make you numb when they hit you. They hurt so much. <laughs> if you accidentally hit your arm, it's like, ah! Your yeah! Arm I, hurt, I hurt myself. I whack myself on the forehead. I remember because I grew up in the 80s when all that shit was so popular, like ninja stuff, getting nunchucks. And every kid I knew just hurt themselves way more. <laughs> I, had a, I had a friend of mine in college who was adamant about the fact that he was a master of ninjutsu. 
You know, like that was the big deal. This is back in the mid eighties yeah, yeah. or something. And none of us believed him. We thought it was like total bullshit. And he was just like saying this to try and get us to believe him for whatever reason. But, um, it's like another friend of mine who was, they both kind of grew up in a similar section of town in Maryland also lied about his father being dead to me for some unknown reason. I don't even know why he, 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 for the longest time acted like his father was dead. And then one time, I don't know why it was weird. Um, this is my friend who later became like, uh, in the band thievery corporation. He was, uh, the sax player. in that. So, so Frank, if you're listening, I'm outing you for your weirdness back in the eighties. So, so yeah. And then one day we went to his house and there was a guy there and he introduced, he introduced him as Frank. So there's like another Frank. And I'm like, um, this is your dad, isn't it? Frank? He's like, yeah. I'm like, why the hell did you lie to me? He's like, oh, I just was embarrassed and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, that's just one wow. of the stranger things. So him and like the other friend who was from the same town who was saying that he was a practitioner of ninjutsu, you know, and he also could sing like Brad Delp from Boston. Apparently those were all of his, his, uh, talents. Skill set. Well. Yeah. I know. It's just, uh, you know, it's interesting what people will say and pretend about themselves. Well, maybe it was I just, all true. Maybe I just I... named Tucson. His name was uh, Trip, and uh, uh, Trip Wallen. I, I wanted to see if we'll get to. See they called him Trip Wallen, and he uh, he was such a liar. We all were friends with him, but he would just like just make up shit. Like if he went out to coffee with someone, he'd tell us all how he was dating this girl. It was like, and the girl would be like, "No, I just went out to coffee with him once, like for ten minutes." At the, <laughs> but then, but then he made bigger lies. And uh, like he read the autobiography of Malcolm X. Yeah. And uh, and then he said he was Malcolm X. No, but all of a sudden he was one eighth black. And this guy looked like <laughs> Millhouse from The Simpsons. I know you don't get that reference. He was so fucking white. Well, I mean, everybody in The Simpsons is yellow. Yeah, he was a totally nerdy white guy. And all this, yeah. like, that's how much he would lie. Like, he just wanted, I guess he was insecure and wanted to impress people all the time. Well, maybe but I'm wrong so, about the color of the people's systems. They're more like a goldenrod. No, they are yellow. They're pretty bright yellow, yeah. That's they're, not, the they're not goldenrod? Maybe goldenrod. Yeah, I think they're closer to Yeah, now you're quibbling so. again. <laughs> no, I'm being more specific, Greg. Flaxen. Quibbling. <laughs> Flaxen. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, Simpson so got, is all like everyone who is related to Goldilocks. But it seems like almost all the martial arts, as far as let's use that definition of just hand to hand combat, maybe you can pick up some bow staff or something. Well, I hadn't gotten like, to that part yet. I know what I'm saying. All the ones we know seem to be Asian, most of them. It's like there's tons of Asian ones judo, jiu jitsu, even sumo wrestling. Now, did you do food, any um, unarmed karate. combat growing up yourself of any kind? I did Taekwondo for a few months and I was terrible. So it was humiliating and I stopped because I was like 16 and all my punk rock friends, for some reason, we were like, oh, let's all take Taekwondo. Maybe so we could beat up the jocks who were picking us, trying to beat us up all the time. Beat up the jocks. And there was like eight-year-old kids in that class. And a lot of the class when you're starting out is like doing balance things where you lift up one leg and just hold it for 20 seconds. Uh -huh. and I was, so these little eight-year-old kids were doing it better than I could. And it was humiliating. So I just gave up. So I don't even know if I got my white belt, if I even made it to the level of being a white belt. I know. I, I did judo back in junior high, either eighth or ninth grade. Um, and I learned how to count to 10 in Japanese, which I don't remember much. It's like echi ni, sanchi, go roku, and I get lost. I think I get that's as far as I go for counting to 10. And, um, I think I got to like a yellow belt or something. I think my brother might have gotten to brown. He got more into it than I did, so that was never really my thing. I was in, um, I was in sports in school anyway, so it was like I didn't really need the judo thing so much. But um, but judo is interesting. That was called the the gentle sport. Yeah, because that's judo is what like people who aren't very big, maybe not even strong, take because you use your opponent's strength against them. Theoretically, yes. So t like women. It's good for well, women. Well, there's no like, blows. There's no blows in judo. You're not like beating on people. Yeah. You're basically just swinging them around. So Bros. it's really good for like uh, Karens, you know, where they can just like swing around their kids to, to uh, throw at people because they're not actually hitting the people they're upset at. Or, the or tackle black men 
who happen to wander to their neighborhood <laughs> on accident. Yeah, so judo <laughs> is good. If you're a Karen, in quotes, um, judo is the sport you should do because that'll help you the best in yanking your children around. Now, boxing, though, is considered a martial art in case, you know, yeah, people tend to think of the, the Asians styles to be martial arts. Savate, French. Savate. There's Kick Savate box. is a, a kicking a kicking yep. one. Uh, and, bo- uh, Wing Chun and karate and box you're considered the punching um of the unarmed the uh, ones. And then there's Muay Thai. Um Muay Thai, I don't know if you saw um Cocktail? There, there's there's an uh, a martial artist by the name of Tony Ja who did a series of movies and he's a Muay Thai specialist, which is basically a Thailand form of martial arts where he uses a lot of elbows and knees to hurt people which makes a lot of sense actually yeah. you know Those because are, you protect yourself weapon. more if you're using your elbows and knees than if you put yeah. use your fist you know so and this guy was high, highly athletic you should check out one or like one or two of his beginning movies you'd be very <laughs> very impressed at his athleticism and then there is uh, a couple of uh, striking unarmed martial arts that I've never heard of before that Wikipedia has here um, we've got Penchatsilat and Kalari Payatu, and I have no idea what those mean or what those are. There's also are those the Asian? Left way. I don't, you know, I'm assuming they're Asian because they don't sound English to me. One of them so, sounds almost like Indian. Is so there an Indian martial art? Kal- Kalari Payatu, that is Indian. It's also yeah, known Indian. as Kalari. It's an Indian martial art that originated in modern day. Is that Kamala. what Dal Sim does in Street Fighter? Where your Dol arms stretch out Sim? 10 feet long. I don't know who Dal Dude, Sim is. He's a character, an Indian character in uh, Street Fighter, who his killer blow is he does this double fist punch that actually his arms stretch like across the screen like Mr. Fantastic or Plastic Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's exactly what they do there. They all okay. have the ability in that country to stretch yeah. their arms out like Mr. Fantastic or like Plastic Man or Elongated Man, any of those stretchy guys. Yeah. Stretch Armstrong, he's well known for that too, from being from that Flat country. Man. <laughs> right. And Pen- Penchat Silat is an Indonesian martial art. And then I'm wondering what Lethwai is. Oh, it's Burmese. So Burmese boxing is Lethwai. Um, and then in the grappling martial arts, you've got basic wrestling. Then you've got Hapkido, Sumo, Aikido, and Judo. Then you've got joint lock, chokehold, submission hold. It's Jiu-Jitsu, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Sambo, and catch wrestling. So they've got that. Then pinning techniques, Judo, wrestling, Aikido. So that's the unarmed ones. Now, if the armed ones... Again, is uh, traditional ma- martial arts the kazan melee yeah. weapons like bladed weapons, pole arms, as and like escrima, which is like a, a Filipino knife uh, martial art. There's a lot of people who are, who are experts at that. As a matter of fact, the a, when I used the to work a corporate gig, my boss was actually a kung fu expert. He was actually on the cover of warrior magazine many 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 years ago and wow. numerous t- tournaments and every so often him and one of the vice presidents of the company would come back and typically the vice president would have a black eye they'd come back from lunch <laughs> and so and i'm like oh i know what they've been doing <laughs> i think you should like, call nobody thought to call hr <laughs> that's pretty abusive they right? would go Worker. they would go sparring for um during their lunch break you know that's and the thing that sucked about this because these guys are such good athletes like my boss he was the ceo of the company um he didn't know racquetball um and we started playing racquetball and because he was such a good athlete eventually he started beating me which pissed me off because i played racquetball for years and like suddenly i'm getting beaten by this guy who's like 10 years older than me i'm like this is not okay and it's not fair, but you know, you're dealing with a guy who's incredibly competitive and he put me on the racquetball court because he wanted to see how competitive I was, which is when I used to play racquetball, I was really competitive. I would throw myself all over the place. I would hurt myself, but don't play no more because the joints can't take it. And I'm incredibly fat. So there's that. And that's not a martial art though. I'll go, although I think racquetball could be a martial art if you're using shrunken heads instead of a ball. That would turn into a martial art. <laughs> right. Somehow, he could turn you it know, into one. I just want to tell a story about it. I knew this guy who played racquetball. He was almost as big as you. He's a huge guy. Yeah. And he kicked the shit out of all of his friends, including me, because he because racquetball, a lot of it's about math. It's almost like pool. 
he didn't have to run around because he could see in his brain where that, you know, figure out the trajectory of the ball. Yeah. So he wasn't moving much, but he knew because uh, a lot of times in racquetball, when I was starting out, I, I had never progressed that far. I'd be running around because I, but I shouldn't have. I, I thought, oh, the ball's going this way. And then I have to run back. Bill just could stand there pretty much and just be like, oh, yeah, it's coming this way. Okay, maybe I'll just step three steps this way because I know the trajectory. Yeah. It was amazing watching him play. Like, he didn't raise a sweat. And he kicked our asses. We'd all be running around, diving for balls. Just yeah, like I mean, even guys like that, though, you can make them run. Yeah, sometimes you got you can, but yeah. he was really good. It's at a matter of where you're hitting the land. ball. So he, could, as soon as you hit the ball, he could almost tell, like, oh, I can slow, semi-slowly walk three feet this way. I'd have to wait till the last minute because I wasn't sure where the ball. I'd have to watch it hit. And then I'd be like, okay, now it's coming this way. Now I run to catch it. Well, you had issues with math anyway, didn't you? Because that's why you became a creative I was always, I was good at math. But not good um, at geometry. I think I was pretty good at geometry. Okay. Well, because geometry is more in play than calculus in right Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't good at calculus, actually. That was the one that hurt me. That hurt my brain. You know, you're not you're not doing simple subtraction or addition in racquetball, other than you know subtracting yourself from the court by walking out. Yes, or or addition when you're adding the, the points up, but mainly yeah. it's like angles. You're dealing with angles in racquetball. Yeah, but again, not a martial art unless you sharpen your racket and you stab somebody with it, and then it can yeah, be contact a racquetball, art. and you tackle them and they try to get the ball. <laughs> that would be a completely a completely completely different form of martial art. Oh, no, sorry. Form of racquetball is tackle racquetball. It would be like you know, rollerball. Yeah, right. Something similar to that. So, um, you know, like we were saying before we started the show, I um, am currently doing Tai Chi. And uh, I remember watching a Jet Li movie a number of years ago where he did, um, it was a Kung Fu movie, basically. And there he, like, lost his memory or something. And he starts, he picks up Tai Chi um, as like an exercise form, and then he finds a way to turn it into like an incredibly effective martial art using the meditative nature of Tai Chi. And uh, he had like this uh, this thing he did with a ball that he was like playing with this ball, and then he found a way to like make this ball move so fast it could crack a concrete wall, which was kind of ridiculous. But you know, it was fun to see. So I think that may have been what caused me to have some interest in wanting to do Tai Chi. That and the fact that it's easy on the joints and it's easy to move around. Yeah. But you I tell you, man, I am so uncoordinated that um, I if anybody watched me while I was doing this, they would go, oh, you need to give that up like right away. You know what that reminds me of is I read somewhere that samurai used to all have to study calligraphy as part of their training because that graceful movement of using a pen very deftly and gracefully is in a miniature version of sword play, of the, the the movements you would use to be a good swordsman. And it would, did you did you say swordsman? Swordsman. Swordsman Swords, is that is swordsman. that how you pronounce it? Swordsman, a which swordsman? you think would be the actual pronunciation would be swordsman because that's there's a yeah, W yeah. in there for a reason. But not fjordsman. It would make him a good fjordsman. <laughs> <laughs> what if you're a swordsman in a fjord? <laughs> Sword Fordsman. And if your name what if your name was Bjorn? Bjorn Sword Swordsman. That's a tongue twister. And then your but, son and you had a son that was born. So I had a character. So Bjorn's one, son was born by the fjords when he's the swordsman. <laughs> so I had a character in one of my stories who was a one of the Chinese coolies who was basically slave enslaved by the railroads. And you did you actually use the word coolie? I think you're allowed to in history books. I read it all the time. I'm always confused by that. It sounds so derogatory. Yeah, there's a but, word in Huckleberry Finn that shouldn't be used either. No, Tom I'm Sawyer. saying in history books, they still use that word because I read a lot about, I like reading history books. And they'll be like, they'll just say it like that's what they were. They were called the coolies. And, uh-huh. and that's what they call them. They don't, you know, they, they don't say, oh, the, uh, the semi-enslaved Chinese workers, immigrants. It's just For some reason, I means... feel like that's a derogatory term. I know. It why. sounds so derogatory. I thought it would have been canceled by now, but I still... Yeah, it, it, is, is. it is a derogatory term. It's a, it offen- is. It's, it says it's offensive. But they offensive. still use it. Okay. That doesn't make it okay, Greg. In history. To... 
continuing well, the history. Yeah, okay, there are words in history that are used, but this isn't history here. No, still used by modern historians. Yeah, I'll I know, say. but you are not a historian. No, I'm not, but I yeah, But you just used much. the word. I'm telling a story from history, so it's okay. <laughs> as soon as it comes out of your mouth, it becomes history. Everything is in the past, Greg. That doesn't make any sense. It's entirely My true. My breakfast though. is not history. Right? It is. It is history. Today. It is it, history, it's Greg. Not much history. It's it's in the past, I, right? Isn't I that what history is? I took a two hours ago. Right. That's also Nobody history. should study that in history. That now. is, you, you shouldn't study it, but it is in your history. <laughs> yes, it is. But I'm talking about history. history. It is part of Greg's Retail history. History. Like when you read a history book about the 1800s and the yes. making of the railroads, the Transcontinental Railroad. But this character, who let's call him a you could call Semi them an unskilled native laborer from China as opposed to using that term. That doesn't really capture what the, they were. They I know. Were if, if you want to be offensive, sure. But no, the not fact offensive. Is, is that, more, yeah. Mr. Quibble, I thought, would like this. It's it's more direct. It's they, they were I do not accept the term Mr. Quibble, so that goes to you. Okay, they, were talking about they yourself would basically then. trick these Chinese people and they'd say, like, hey, there's great jobs in America. Like, all kinds of people would sign up. Yeah. Oh my God! And then the, when they got here, they were basically um, what's the word? Not a slave, but a indentured, indentured. servant. Yeah. And it, they were like treated like like just whipped and killed, and and uh, so this guy's a calligrapher in China, and then he he thinks he's gonna get some good job in America. He gets becomes a railroad worker. I, I so thought you he, said for a second that he became a werewolf. He, that's later on in the story. He that's comes from he China, started. joins the the railroad, and then suddenly he's a werewolf. But there's no that's... pens in the railroad. There's no access to like a nice ink well. So every night he goes out with a broom and he makes the letters in the sand. He does his art. So uh -huh. basically, he gives himself a crash course in being a great swordsman. Because not only is he doing calligraphy, he's doing it with a big broom. So his muscles are learning totally all the movements that a swordsman would a need. Swordsman. To do. The swordsman sword. from Fjord. A sword, a fjordsman would need. A sword so fjordsman. I, but I just thought that was fascinating when I heard about that calligraphy thing. Like, oh, I guess I could see that. Like, that's how. Well, you know, in the movie Hero, which is getting yeah, another Jet Li reference in here, there's a, a character in that movie who is also the guy who played the Mandarin in uh, Shang-Chi and the Ten Rings. Um, he was in that movie with Jet Li. The and real he, Mandarin. Yes. Uh, he was um, doing calligraphy with like a giant paintbrush, which like helped his uh, sword play out as well in that movie. I don't know I've, if you remember that part or not, but I've seen I that don't. movie many, many times. One of my favorite kung fu movies. But I'll have my lawyers call their lawyers and talk about this because I came would, up with my idea first. Why would you have your lawyers call when you're a fake lawyer yourself? Well, I'm a fake lawyer. I need a real lawyer for this. Oh, got it. Okay. Well, then that makes sense. Well, we don't have anybody watching on TikTok now, and uh, I don't think that uh, we've got... I was fascinated by all these martial arts that you're mentioning. We're like, especially the Asian ones, they're hundreds of years old. Maybe some are thousands of years old. But then there's Jeet Kune Do, Do which Jeet Bruce Kune Lee Do? made up uh, in the late 60s, early 70s. And that is a lot of followers. At well, that, least was Bruce, I was like, that was Bruce Lee's um, yeah, martial arts. that's what he, I just said. I think he created that. That's what I just said. Yeah. I didn't hear you say Bruce Lee. Oh, by the way, yeah. Happy Hour News Team and Sanchez El Dorado um, are on YouTube right now. They have stated that judo is the art of folding clothes with people still in them. And uh, then Sanchez says, maybe get a newer book. I don't know what he's referring to. Oh, but your oh, history. Oh, the history book. Your, so, his so they your history book that talks about you going to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so, G so judo, I guess, was made by Lon launders. <laughs> Japanese la laundromats is what yeah. you... <laughs> I always thought it was a Jewish martial art. You know, it makes yeah, more it's sense. J -E it's in the name. It's in the name. And, you know, you think that because um, Jews were a nomadic group of people that they would have created their own martial art as well. But I guess yeah. it just came down to camels or something. I don't know. And the Jews were so picked on throughout their history, you'd think they would have made been pretty good at, like, we got to defend ourselves. we got to make up a martial art. I think their martial art was sarcasm. That's what I really think. I think yeah, that's yeah. what they Comedy. developed. They developed sarcasm, 
to get out of things. That's what I think. And guilt. They guilt people into not beating them up. And so, like, the, it makes sense that the Catholics would pick up on the guilt, too, because they're, like, one of the earliest forms of Christianity yeah. coming out of Judaism, you know. By the way, I, I heard this somewhere that I think uh, Israel has their own martial art they've invented since Israel started. They, the Israeli army has a certain martial art that's different. It oh, probably I, incorporates I can't other wait to hear arts. what you say it's called. I'm not making a joke, so I have no oh. funny name. It's, All right. Well, then I. It translates though about. in Hebrew. It translates to Palestinian killer. Palestinian killer. Yeah. That's ways to kill the Palestinians. It's called landmines, is what it is. But with your hands, it's a real martial. Like it's a pan to hand combat that I hear the Israeli. Wait, army you said fight. it's a pan to hand combat. In other words, they're fighting with like cast iron pans is that what that's, the, mar hand hand, that's the martial art is they have cooking utensils and they go out onto the field with like uh frying pans would that be so bad a frying pan is a good weapon it's like it's pan to hand combat just like you said yeah it could be good pan to hand they go out and they just like beat other people in the hand with their pans and that's yeah. their martial art like maggie and jigs and bringing up father she always still pans at his head when she was angry all right, Greg, you want to talk about history. Bringing up father, seriously? Wasn't that from like the 1950s? Even earlier. <laughs> Starting in the 20s. In the 20s. Oh, is yeah, this a, a comic strip? It's the most popular comic strip in America, though. Oh, it's, I thought you were talking about I thought the Yellow Kid was the most popular one. That was the earliest. It yeah. was already gone, though, by the time Bringing Up Father came around. But it was typical, like, that domestic humor, which was like a trope back then, like, the wife would get so mad at the husband, she'd be throwing pans at his head. And I remember Mad Magazine had this parody of that whole idea where they showed what would really happen in that situation. And the husband's just bloody and like his face is broken. Like if a wife was really doing that, throwing pots and pans at her husband when she got angry with him, this guy would be in the hospital every week. But they just played it for laughs. It was just like, ho oh, ho, look at him run <laughs> from a deadly weapon thrown at his head. You know, I think if that if you and uh, Jen had actually gotten married, that you guys would be practicing uh, pan to hand combat a lot. You know? I think so. Instead, you're but, just doing ashtray to head combat. But think about a pan, though. It's almost yeah. like a great weapon and a shield, a mini shield. So, like somebody throws a uh, a dart at you, a poison dart, you're like, whoa, and stop it, and then you hit him in the head with it. <laughs> It's not a bad weapon. Two metal pans in your hands that could be a martial art. Well, I think it was in at least one movie. Um, it was uh, what was it? Throw Mama from the Train, where they use the. Uh, I the pan. remember that movie. It was with uh, gosh, that old lady. Oh, Danny DeVito. I totally like, remember it. Danny DeVito. Remember it wasn't it. Billy Crystal in that too. I think so. It's so, like Billy was like the nebbish type, and or Danny DeVito. Any one of them was trying to like kill their mother. One thing I always remember that movie is in the beginning when he's taking a writing class. Yeah. Everyone's writing serious novels and stuff. And he, <laughs> he writes a book, 50 Women I'd Like to Pork. And it's just photos of the 50. Well, that would not be written by a Jew because women. they wouldn't be involving pork in that. <laughs> in the movie, I don't know if he plays a Jew. Oh, okay. Well, Sanchez Alderado says that Israeli martial art you're talking about is Krav Maga. Uh, yes, that sounds But right. he spells Marshall like Marshall Matt Dillon is what he does instead. <laughs> so in this case, it sounds like it's Matt Dillon is actually doing some drawing and that's martial art. So yeah. it's like paintings from Marshall Matt Dillon. Or it's the martial arts, it's police work, you know, being a policeman. Yeah. Marshall with the S H. Or it has something to do with Mars bars, and those are Marshall. And so it's got to do with candy bars and you're, you know, you're only able to fight type two diabetics. By throwing them in their mouth. <laughs> right. Make them eat, jack their blood sugar off and send them into a coma. <laughs> That's how that works. All right. Well, I think we've come to the halfway mark. I think it's time for our uh, favorite cooking segment or our only cooking segment. That is what makes it the favorite, I believe. Um, Wait, can I just say a bad joke real quick? What if there was gluto instead of judo where you'd throw bread into gluten-free people's mouths and send them into a, an allergic reaction? Kung glu. <laughs> <laughs> I like kung glu. 
Kind of how I feel right now. I'm a little coming unconglued. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, let's get uh, let's get Waspy here. I uh, I think he's got um, something special to share. So we'll uh, we'll see. Can you see Waspy right now? Is he there? Yep. Food is for eating. Food is for eating. Food is for eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Hey there, everybody. This is Waspy Soda Pop. This is a St. Patrick's Day edition. I got another cousin from across the pond, I think is what they call it. Today we got Fudge Pop Sud, all the way from Ireland. I in Begora. This is Fudge Pop Sud. We've got traditional Irish cold cannon. The ingredients, ah, they're a coming. You get one dash of salt. You can add more if you want. Two russet potatoes, peeled and quartered. Two planks of ash tree bark. Four ounces of curly kale, chopped and stems removed. Two spring onions. Four ounces of unsalted butter. One spring onion, finely chopped. Freshly ground black pepper to taste. You can add two more ounces of unsalted butter if you choose for serving. Now we make it. You lightly salt a pot of hot water and simmer the potatoes until soft in the middle when pierced with a sharp knife. Do not pierce your skull with it. I tell you, it's a bad thing to do. In a different pot, you blanch the curly kale in boiling water for one minute. You drain the kale in reserve. Place the half cup of roughly chopped spring onions and the blanched kale into a blender and pulse for 10 seconds until roughly mixed. Just like if you're on the docks and they're coming after you and you've got to run, but you don't want it that rough. Then you drain the potatoes and add four ounces of butter. Mash the potatoes and butter into smooth and creamy. Add the kale and spring onion mixture and stir it well. Add the quarter cup of finely chopped spring onions and season with salted pepper to taste. Top the mash with the optional two ounces of butter if you desire it. Insert the planks of the ash tree bark gently into the mash. Serve it and enjoy. And that's how you make Irish traditional cold cannon with ash tree bark. May you escape the gallows, avoid distress, and be as healthy as a trout. And may the leprechauns dance over your bed and bring you sweet dreams. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Well, thank you so much there, Foch Sode. That was quite the recipe. This is Waspy Soda Pop. See you next week on Food is for Eating. This was like 1902. That would be so racist. <laughs> I, why? I mean, I'm willing to believe that he's related to Waspy Soda Pop. All of his cousins seem to have similar voices. No, people don't like the accents anymore, you know. But but now Irish people... But it's, it's, it's a real it's Irishman, not. Greg. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, so he's just talking that stereotypically it was like this guy from ireland who like was talking that way who grew up with a bad irish accent somehow even though he grew up you know in, we grew up with, with bad american accents don't we so that's true but i i don't understand why is, is that that recipe seemed to be one half butter just <laughs> added at different times <laughs> well it seemed like it was easily made it was like mashed potatoes with kale and it's curly kale. I don't even know what the hell that is. Curly kale. Is that a real part of Colcurran? Like, did you stick to the rest? Or did, Col I'm sorry. Colcannon is what it's called. Well, you know, I think the best part of that recipe is the ash tree bark that is placed. Really? That's the best part. <laughs> I think so. That's like the surprise you get when you bite into it, right? Makes it nice and crunchy. <laughs> it makes you lose a couple of teeth. Good roughage, though. You'd probably yeah. Be yeah, you'd Pl be uh, plenty of free roughage. and easy for a couple days. <laughs> maybe I don't know. I don't know if you digest bark how it goes for you, but maybe uh, yeah. you guys from Happy Hour News Team can let us know That's how extra. they do chewing on trees in North Dakota in the dead of winter. But uh, That's how they do it there? You know, do we have any native martial arts in the United States of America? Like ones uh, like UFC. <laughs> <laughs> WWE wrestling, the double suplex, the triple suplex. You know, like maybe Jeet Kune Do could be that since Bruce Lee had yeah. developed, I think, while he was in the United States. I think he, he did. did, yeah. Well, I mean, he learned his style from Ip Man. Have you seen all the Ip Man movies? I haven't seen them all, but I know of what you speak. I know of, I know of what you speak. <laughs> 
master. I know of the Ip Man of which you speak. I just thought, can you do something when you edit the show to make our uh, like our voices lag behind our mouths by one second? <laughs> So it'll look like a kung fu movie that's dubbed, poorly dubbed. We can, but I don't like doing that because it's very <laughs> off. Be, it's very off putting for the topic for the client. We will have our own kung fu moves. Yeah, Yeehaw. these guys know terrific kung fu. Master Lee says that these guys are going to beat our school. We have, have to eat them. My pasta. I, I always like how that movie said you. Had, you cannot. <laughs> Ever come to my place again? They, I always love how all those movies had that like 110 year old guy who owned the tea shop who was always this cowardly, like just like, I tell you, it's funny you should do that because that's what you reminded me of every time I saw you with your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Like, Anything she wanted, that's how you acted. Anything she was upset, that's how you acted. And all of a sudden, my mustache would turn into this long... Yes, and then you would stroke it. You would stroke it, like at length. (laughs) Yes, my mustache is... You know, where does the word mustachio come from whenever people have a mustache is that what, what the word was originally called i don't know it's, yep. i you know it's, it's one of those things that kind of have to be like but it, would there be a mustache martial art is the real question i can't imagine how that would work if maybe a stubble could hurt someone you could rub the <laughs> stubble like if you're in a ufc match right or a mixed yeah, martial yeah. arts match where you get them down on the mat and then you start rubbing yeah. your chin into their forehead or something and right then you have like a mustache foo or mustache rati. Yeah, right in their eyeballs. So I think America, we made... That's I the Italian think, martial art, apparently. So traditional boxing, I guess, started in England, right? But it's pretty American. I mean... I don't know I, if it started in England. I think it did. It probably started whenever, like, the first caveman tried to steal somebody's food. No, but that's... I mean, the actual art of fisticuffs as we know of boxing. With oh, the fisticuffs. Are we yeah. bringing up now, are we? Like this kind of fisticuffs when you do, do this shit, you know how the old in Britain they would like punch like this. In Britain, like in those old Monty Python cartoons, it'd be like, like all... uh, Gentleman Jim Corbett. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was a Brit, like a British well, style. Yeah, you had to pound you. But everyone in America was basically uh, the majority were British, so it was like, yeah, we just took it over here. We probably changed it a little. I don't know that it started in Great Britain. Well, they, I thought it did, but that, like, what Queensberry rules, you know, the traditional boxing. They may know. have, it's kind of like soccer, right? It, like, they may have codified it. They may have uh, made it more yeah. Britified, Anglicized. But you could probably but, see that about judo or any of those martial arts probably were what something a caveman did and is, hey, that works. Let's oh, I was doing it. some digging on the word mustache. So mustache um, is French, but it's derived from the Italian mustachio. Um, That's what I said. I dialectical said mustachio, but that comes from the medieval Latin mustachium and the medieval Greek, which is mustachion. And then that comes from uh, Hellenistic Greek of mustax, meaning upper lip or facial hair. Probably derived from the Hellenistic Greek. And in Arabic, it's called Mustafa. But when they say mustachioed, it's generally referring to a particularly large or bushy mustache. So, like a, like probably that mustache I used to have, which was like with curly cues and. That's right. I had like the the three rings coming out of my face way back when. Yeah, like you look like a circus ringmaster. I always awesome. like how we start off with like two or three people on TikTok and we always end up with zero people watching us on TikTok. We're not so I'm dancing. Like, I'm glad I finally noticed where where they disappear <laughs> on here. Yeah, we're not dancing. We did get three likes. Sometimes we get like a few hundred likes on TikTok and sometimes we get hardly any like now. So I got like three. So they don't even watch us and yet they still like us. Yeah, it's kind of like a weird... Um, Pavlovian response, I think, on TikTok. Just to be nice. They're like, oh, these guys seem like generally nice guys, even though they suck at podcasting, but let's give them a like. <laughs> like a gold star for a kid. Yeah, who's... well, I don't even know how much they pay attention, you know? It's hard to say. Well, they obviously turn off and stop watching, so they didn't like it. I they don't, don't think we're that worthy of watching. 
Well, we're a couple old white guys, you know. Well, sense. we could be two funnier, more entertaining white guys. We could, we could. I, I keep wondering if, like, we'll ever find like our actual tribe or not, Greg. You know, like the people um, who exist in outside of North Dakota. Outside of North Dakota. Well, there's Paula. Paula still listens to us. My Paula's brother, like Paul? listen to everything except for like the last episode. Generally, she's like she enjoys it, and she said so. So I'm like, and we, you know, we get about between twenty five to forty people a week, just strictly the podcast platform. And on YouTube, we range between like 10 to 30. So if you put all those people in one room, it'd be a very full room and it would be a nice little party. So we have a small, we have our own little cult. It's the cult of the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker that listened to us for some reason. Now, Now, when we did that Joe Rogan episode though, that spiked our numbers. Like surprisingly, so because it was topical. It was I didn't. I know, but we did topical. Ukraine and we did the Freedom yeah. Convoy, but they didn't get the same amount of speed. But I think it's because Rogan's a podcaster, and I think that's what did that. So, oh, by the way, little, I know that this is not topical what we're doing today. So, just want to give a little update, news update, guys. Uh, my, I hung out with my Canadian friends yesterday. <laughs> Even though all the restrictions have been lifted for the COVID shit, yeah, the Freedom Convoy is still furious and still going at it. Like, we'll care. have that mandate lifted, even though it's lifted already. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I, I haven't been following it, but they told me they kind of caught me up on it. And they were like, and second of all, the whole thing they were fighting about, it's like they couldn't do that in the first place. They couldn't cross the border or whatever that way. But they were mad. I don't know why, just because they said on top of that, because of COVID, you can't cross the border. They couldn't have done it in the first place, even before COVID. Well, so you know, since a- since we're digressing, um, why don't we just go ahead and go into Ask Greg? You know, mm-hmm. we, we should just do that. I think that's uh, necessary now. Here we go. He has an opinion, may not always be right. He's a real fake lawyer. He's old and he's white. Ask him a question, because he's a good egg for bogus advice. Ask Greg. Ask Greg? Ask Greg. Dear Greg, which martial art would the hands not be considered lethal weapons? Sabate. The feet would uh, be, though. A kickboxing, yeah. Right. But the hands would not. Um, any kind of judo. Judo is all about like wrestling moves, throwing. The hand doesn't necessarily do the killing blow. So, uh, I And guess legally, I mean, how did that come about? How did it come about legally that any martial art in terms of just an unarmed one, be, people could be called lethal. Because weapons. you forged your hands in a deadly weapons by studying karate, for example. So your hand Wait, is a deadly how did weapon. You, how did you pronounce that, Greg? That's the correct way, apparently. Yeah, are you, are you American? Karate. Pronounce it however you want to pronounce it, Greg. I, I it, like... Do you I pronounce, pronounce every, them tacos or tacos? I pronounce them tacos because that's how it's supposed to be pronounced. Quesadilla or quesadilla? <laughs> quesadilla. Nobody says that. No, I'm Big sure Wom that... or teepee? Oh, those are both uh, valid. <laughs> There's two. Both good. They're, they're, they're both synonyms, good. synonyms, aren't they? Ashkenazi they're... or Shavardic? <laughs> what about a yurt? Yurt <laughs> or teepee? Yak or milk? Igloo. <laughs> Fermented yak milk or tequila? <laughs> Are they pronounced the same or not? I don't know now. I'm confused. <laughs> I, I don't even know what we started on, and I've already confused myself. Well, yes, there's a good reason. If you have deadly hands, like just like the old comic book, Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, mm-hmm. they should be registered just like a gun. If I can kill you with my hands, those are deadly weapons. Yeah, and but anybody to... could kill anybody else with their hands. You can just like poke somebody in the eyeball or... or um... The gouge nose. their eyes out to the brain. Yeah, exactly. You know, it can be some little it's old lady. True, you can but do it. It's it's harder. If you're like a master of kung fu, yeah. like Shang Chi, you could um Who's you, know, you would know how to like just karate chop someone in the windpipe there and just kill them easy peasy. I'm not gonna say the rest. <laughs> easy peasy, nice and easy. Shanty See? says that there are a couple of old white guys also. Yes. But nowhere near, he's not as old as 
Sanchez. But they average us out, though, don't they? Because well, Sanchez, Sanchez is like ten years older, older than, than me, us. but Shanty is like ten years younger, 10 years than, younger you. than you. You're probably even more. But he is balder, so maybe that counts for something. Maybe he... maybe Shanty's baldness makes him older. Shanty's bald? I don't remember. I thought he had a nice head of hair. No, <laughs> he does not. He, he, he a has a nice visual... head of hair on the side of his head. I have a terrible uh, visual memory. You should send him some of your curly locks so he can glue them to the top of his head. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you I could, could send them. And you could uh, teach him hair foo. <laughs> How to fight with your hair. With your follicles. <laughs> I am I am so irreverent. It's crazy. I just... Uh... Irreverent's not the word. <laughs> no? What's the word, Greg? Inane. <laughs> Oh, inane. Okay. It's a real. Is that that's it's another partner of the law offices? Da da. <laughs> Quibble, squabble, inane, and bicker. <laughs> we have so many partners we could add to the title. Maybe we should. Maybe we should just like have the title, the name of the law offices just get longer and longer. Yeah, we should get more partners. <laughs> we should. <laughs> you know, as as each of us disappear, where it's just. Me or just you doing the podcast at some point? Obvious, obviously, inanity has uh, done a lot of work for our podcast. Has really a manatee? You know, inanity. Oh, inanity! Yes, it's done a lot of. They say a manatee. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's become a big part of our law office uh, clientele. So uh, maybe we should include them. I mean, they've done the work. They've earned yeah. it. They've earned partnership. Yeah, but it doesn't quite fit with the theme of the law offices, though. I mean, there's the quibbling, there's the squabbling, and there's the bickering. It's more like a deliberate those are all kind of, syn- of annoyance. Those are all kind of semi-synonymous, those three words, but we also do a top well, of being quibble is not synonymous. With, squabbling and bickering is more synonymous than quibbling is. This is true. And so, yeah. but even though we have those three things, a lot of our show is just being a name. And, well, your and inanity is my um, reality. And as the kids would say, we're random. We're Which rando. We're I rando. don't think kids are saying that anymore. It's, I'm sure it's 15 years old. But Shanti says to you, I haven't had hair for 25 years. He is <laughs> follically impaired. I see. That's how bad I am at observing. So he needs to learn hair foo to uh, make it in this world. <laughs> His hair grow. That's right. Just by centering his chi and being like, <laughs> That's right. if he like has a really good bowel movement, he can cause the hair to move out of the top can of his head. I, can I go a little backwards? I wanted to say, I remember one thing from my Taekwondo. My two that was not backwards, back. Greg. If you're going to do backwards, make the sound effect. No. That, I, that's uh, one of the reasons I love you, Greg. The one thing I remembered. <laughs> From uh, Taekwondo is the center of your chi. It was this thing where you'd stand. I'll try to do it. Let's see if you can see me. You would do this thing, stand loose. And you, would you would learn. You learn this from Taekwondo. Yeah, this would do Taekwondo this every- doesn't have chi. That's a Chinese concept. No, but it, whatever. It, what, Taekwondo whatever is that. Korean. Yeah, they call it the um, kimchi. It's the kim- <laughs> centering your kimchi. You go like this. Like I forgot like- about kimchi, the martial art. <laughs> And then you would go like this, you'd go, shoot, and your fist would be right here, like where your center is. Uh-huh. Like that was, and it's, it feels good. It's weird. It does really actually like feel like this thing of just like, shoot. What was that noise you're making? Are it's you like, like shoot. Oh, because it was like know, some it's... kind of strange sound coming out of your body. That's what it was. It was this kind of like you're, you're exha- exhaling lots of breath going. Do it again. Let me see if I can recreate the noise. Say it one more time. Chewbacca. 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 Chewy. Chewy. Chewkataka. <laughs> that's the well, only thing I remember. I, okay. I don't remember anything from Taekwondo except for the stance. I remember the stance. That you're supposed to have when you're fighting. I don't remember shit. Have you found that um, you ever actually needed martial arts in your life? Probably, but I'm a coward, so I just ran and said, I mean, it would have been nice to have known that I could kick someone's ass. Some people yeah. have these incidences where, oh, God, that guy needs an ass kick. And, like, we get, somebody has to do something. But I was like, I can't do it. 
I'm just going to get beat up too. I yeah, don't... the weird thing is, is that I'm not a coward, but I never got into fights. Um, I was kind of more of a, an active spectator to some extent. You know, it's like they would they'd be like maybe fighting around me, but I could usually diffuse situations because generally I was causing people to want to hit me, but then I would get them to like calm back down again. I think one of my issues when I was younger was I always wanted to see how far I could take somebody before they lost their marbles, you know, and then I would like dial it back to where they were calm again. Oh my god! Get them like so. It's a sadistic fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin this person's whole day for fun so I can. No, laugh. it would only have been like your day, so you know. That's what I'm saying, though. But I mean, when you do other that, people can someone, handle it. Other, when you when you push someone to the point of wanting to beat you up, that's they're probably you ruined their day. They're probably furious all day. They're like, oh god, I'm so pissed off. For some reason, I think I got some um, some pleasure out of it because I think it just it made me feel superior to them because I was able to maintain my calm and they were not, or some some you know, weird psychological reason why I would do something like that, you know. But you know, the one time when actually I was confronted with a situation where I could like help someone, even though I knew I'd probably they'd probably just beat me up, I did run towards. I was I was. Me and my brother and his friends were going to a gay bar. We parked like a block away. And as we get out of the car, heard this commotion. It's, at first, it just sounded like people having fun. It yeah. sounded, you was know, your brother people, trying to get you dates or something? Is that why he took you to the gay bar? Well, he, my brother's gay. And I, right, I, just, I know like, he is, but you're not, right? No, but even when my brother wasn't in town, I loved the local gay bar at the best karaoke in town. at really good oh, big prices. It was, I like going there all the time. Ah. So... I heard this commotion and we realized, no, this isn't fun in games. Like, you know, people are drunk going, woo. Cause we could hear this guy be like, help someone. And all my brother and his friends were just frozen. And I've never been like this guy who does shit. Like that. I just ran towards the sound. And luckily they were, they practi- were-, were they practicing Dick Fu? Which Dick Fu? Dick Fu. No, it was a bunch of basically gay bashing street punks. Oh, gotcha. they, they're kicking the shit out of this gay guy. Well, you know, and, you think that the homosexual community would work out their own martial art in order to combat I know. those gay bashers. You know? Well, I'm sure some of them do. There's some uh, pretty tough gay guys out there. No, right? they like create their own, though, like some special gay <laughs> martial art. Be you know. careful, Matt. Matt. What? <laughs> what are you talking Tread about? lightly. What are you talking about? Because uh, you're going to make up some name for this. And it's going to be. <laughs> I already did. I called it Dick Fu. Oh, so, yeah, that's. Uh, I don't know or that... Cockrate. <laughs> I'm actually proud of that one. Oh, I my just, God. I just made that one up. That's a good one. Anyway. G Con Blow. What? Sorry, that was. Oh. Was... Yeah, you're stretch, stretching a little on that one, Greg. Yeah, but I mean, I actually, I mean, I did, and luckily they had run off because they probably were like, okay, before the cops get here. But they were, so they, as soon as I got to the guy, yeah, they were running off. So I don't know what I would have done. I probably would have just got beat up because I'm not going to run with them. I've never been in a fight in my life. I, yeah. Maybe I'm like a Bruce Willis and Unbreakable. I'm this amazing fighter. I don't know. Maybe it's some innate <laughs> thing. I don't think, I doubt it. Yeah, you know, you could have like hidden abilities that no one. But knows I grew about. up watching kung fu movies, so maybe it just like sunk in. Maybe I know some moves just from watching so many Hong Kong kung fu movies. You know, next time I see you in person, I'm going to ask you to demonstrate some of those. You're just going to attack me. Just to see. what I do. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> going to I'm going to tackle you. <laughs> like, all right, Greg, fend off these pumpkins, and I'm going to toss at you. Show me your moves. I'll but just I come with like protected. an arm full of pumpkins and just toss them. I haven't been tested most of my life because I've been always huge, a fat guy. So people don't know that's all blubber. They just think, oh shit, I, that guy could be strong. You know, he's big. So mm. I'm not going to. So I haven't been attacked much of my life. It's not like it's come down to where I was just like, no, leave me alone. Sorry. It never gets to there. Well, you know, we're, I, we're both at the at a certain age where we're not really getting in fights anymore in terms of like creating those those dramas but i never did i was always yeah. an easy going guy so it never got to that point like you you ain't demand you were trying to get beat up it sounds like i never did shit like that didn't happen though i mean the last yeah. time i was in any kind of a fight was i think in like high school briefly for like a minute and then we 
just maybe less. And we were, then we were was the kind of thing we just pushed each other. each other a few times and, like, and before <laughs> that, it was like fifth grade, I think. So I never yeah. really was getting into any type of fights. Um, again, I was more like the guy getting other people to fight each other. I think more than anything else. But um, the one other time was I just remember like fights like happening near me. Or me trying to break up fights. That's pretty much the extent of it. Um, yeah, I did that a lot. I, I was the fight breaker. Of, I like. Yeah. I wanted peace. Yeah. So how how did you break up fights, Greg? I just pull the guy off, and usually they wouldn't attack me. But sometimes yeah. I got hurt. I remember once I was breaking up a fight, and this huge guy fell back on me, totally hurt my back, and I was just like, "Fuck!" That's what I get for being a nice guy. Nice guy. I was trying to do it, and then he hit me big. And that, or it's just because you didn't learn good balance from your lack of martial arts training. Could be, but... Oh, was... there's no could be about it, Greg. It's definite. I might have had better balance, but he still fell back on me. and uh, Yeah, I wasn't quick enough. You're right. I wasn't yeah. quick enough to... Uh... No. You need to be lighter on, lighter on your feet. You'd be more like... Yes. Float, float like a butterfly. And sting like a jellyfish. Like the Beverly Hills Ninja, the big fat ninja. Like Chris Farley. Chris Farley. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we've exhausted this topic of martial arts, considering Greg and I really don't know anything about martial arts. Wait, but once again, our client about... wait, 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 was five I... finger. Don't stop. Exploding spleen technique. Don't stop I just what? Wanted to bring up, I what? wanted to bring up just one. I always thought, found this hilarious. That there's a, an imaginary martial art. Yes. That was in the 80s. There was a movie called Jim Cotta. It's spelled like Jim. Like oh, gymnastic. yeah, yeah, yeah. Wasn't that with Cynthia Rothrock? Wasn't it was a, a, that? a guy named Kurt something. He was like the Olympic gymnast that oh, year. Oh, yeah, like yeah, he, yeah, right. And he Kurt had like Tom one movie. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, and they, they thought, okay, this guy's like good looking and, you know, knows. Even though he was like five feet tall or something. So they pretended that there was this martial art called Jim Kata, which was like gymnastics mixed right. with Asian Kata. martial arts. Kata so is I, basically just the form that people are doing. Yeah. I guess, but it was totally made up. No, it I is. Just I mean, love, that's something I learned. In, I one of the, the things idea. I remember from judo is Kata. But to be right. honest, our title, our client this week is a made up martial art. That is not a real thing. It's totally a real thing. You Come cannot here. touch his chest. I will and make use my five-fingered exploding spleen technique on you right now. Man, and then you will have psoriasis next week. <laughs> It'll take a week. I don't know what psoriasis has anything to do with the spleen. It probably doesn't. But the, the, where we <laughs> get the, this It's where the psoriasis is located. It's right in the spleen. Spleen, of course, as we know, is right directly behind the kneecap. Yeah, of course. Everyone yeah, knows that's that. Where it's, it's where it's kept in a little pocket. Sometimes it's near, near your ankles too. It floats it moves around. around. It's like it a slug. Up and down the calf. It's like an internal slug. You know, it just moves around in your body. Yeah. This plane where it feels like going. Depending on the temperature. If it's hot, it's up in your knee. And when it gets colder, <laughs> sinks down. <laughs> it's like how you keep your temperatures. <laughs> it's a thermometer. You track your spleen, a splenometer. <laughs> it's a thermo this, the thermometer of the organs. <laughs> Everyone knows that's what the spleen does. The spleen is what regulates our internal temperature through uh, packing ice cubes into our toes. Oh yeah, speaking of which, there was a martial art I totally forgot. It just it totally involves the extremities, but the very specific extremities, and that is tofu, which uh, many people have heard of and don't really know <coughs> the techniques for it. And all you can use is your toes. That's right. <laughs> Nothing else. Like somehow you have to get them to kind of fly off the end of your feet and like poke people in the eyes. That is a, a true tofu, tofu master can do. <laughs> you didn't know about that one. I like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> Because there's like different kinds of tofu. You've got your hard. Oh, but you got your it, soft and your creamy. <laughs> I'm and it's more, better if you. I'm wheezing. Your toes. Yeah, definitely old. I'm wheezing. While if you I'm... marinate your toes in like some kind of soy sauce, it's <laughs> yes. more effective. Yeah, a little frying goes a long yeah. way. It's like but Rocky I, Mountain also, oysters, you know. We are forgetting another. I'm pretty sure is a made-up style. Is that drunken yes. master kung fu that all the movies would. 
highlight. I don't think that's made up. I mean, uh, Jackie it's Chan real? was Jackie Chan would do it. He, uh, I know but you know, moved. the thing about Jackie Chan is that Jackie Chan wasn't really a martial artist when he got into the pictures. No. He came he out of the, like the Chinese opera. Yeah, he yeah. was a gymnastic guy. You yeah. know, so I don't know. I mean, maybe, but I mean, he he kind of perfected the drunken style of kung fu in movies his that, movies. That, it became yeah. a popular thing. Drunken master style. Which doesn't make sense because like the Kung Fu guys were like Buddhists, and I didn't know that Buddhists were drinkers. I don't know, but I'm thinking I should call myself drunken master. Maybe I'm really good at that. And why is it that the Shaolin Temple was the only temple we ever heard about? We never heard about the other temples. Only the Shaolin Temple. Because maybe they were like the warrior monks. Did you say monks? I I did. Monks, (laughs) monks, monks. Monkeys. They're warrior monkeys. The monks. That's racist, man. The monks. <laughs> they are the warrior monks. <laughs> We're but yeah, yeah. Over emphasize things. When you when you're a fan of kung fu movies, it's like half the movies have Shaolin in the title. It's so weird. It's like Yeah, it's like what what makes them so special? There's like hundreds of movies. Was it like, the Shaolin Temple that was behind the Boxer Rebellion in China? Was that where they helped. came from? Yeah. I think so. But I think they were around for longer than that. Like for a long time. Well, Central. yeah, I mean, they were like the, the go-to temple, allegedly. I mean, what do we know? We yeah. know only from I studied, kung fu movies. <laughs> like, but we don't know if this is real. Or I not. studied some Asian history in college, so I yeah. Did you study like more offensive words in your Asian history class? Yeah, because we were the primary sources. <laughs> You're the primarily <laughs> progenitors of uh, Asian caricatures, stereotypes, and offensive terms. When Jefferson Davis gave a speech to the Confederacy in 18, whatever, 62. The man you idolized. Say, they, they didn't scratch out the, the word. They, we, we read what they read, said. Uh-huh. Which is what historians should know. Right. And that's fine in history books, just not on, you know, broadcasted podcasts. Okay. But so then we can't talk about history correctly. We can talk podcast. about history, but we can but it won't do be it. quite correct. We can do it in a way where it can still be explained without being derogatory you sound like a coolie right now <laughs> you sound like a racist i'm sorry i just i, I even asked chinese friends if they, about this and they're like yeah it is i'm not sure it's because nobody uses that word i haven't used it in a long time it's not uh-huh. this slur that's prevalent like hey look at the coolie over there but it is this thing that i'm there, you've just used like three times already yeah sorry okay because you don't word. care Let's see it's where... okay. It's okay, Greg. I gr- I get it. I you do don't care. care. Why don't you but... start calling them like slant eyes or something too while you're at it? No, Greg. because I, that's just a flat out. It's always been a racist. Oh well, term. there you go. Yeah, <laughs> there's but, there's the issue. But the C word. It's like without... you you're okay. you're willing to use one racist term but not another. You know because you can't decide what kind of racist you want to be. No, because it's relatively seen as racist. It was never like it was just like that's what that group was known as. Uh-huh. Just like sure. nomads, the nomads. The uh, whatever. Nomads was not used in a derogatory way. The indentured way. servants. That wasn't used in a derogatory way either. I'm sure if there were still indentured servants, they'd say, no, call us this. No, indentured was an actual term, and they were yeah. servants. They weren't, time, they weren't the used in an uh, they weren't an used in offended, they weren't used to malign a group of people. It was just the term for those people. That is all. Like the term you're using is defining people who were um what, what was the term again it was uh I don't, don't you think they t- felt offended when you called them indentured servants eventually they would have been like no, don't call us that they know that they're indentured servants we they, want to be called temporary they they workers. signed the documents that made them that yes so yeah it's like legally they that's the term that was used in legal documents greg it's not the same thing it's not used to people, specifically malign a group of people and black people at one time said we all want you, we want you to call us colored. That's what we want. And then they changed it. Okay. Well, you're allowed to if you're the people in yeah. question. So maybe yeah. the indentured servants would have been like, yeah, we signed those papers. We know technically. All right, you go find the evidence on that and we'll have that discussion. Well, they it ended, so they didn't have time to. <laughs> it didn't I'm sure it's so. I mean, slavery yeah. still exists in this world in different places. So I'm sure there's indentured yeah. servitude happening in different places as well. No, it definitely is. Yeah. You're right. And I don't know that saying somebody's an indentured servant is worse than calling somebody a slave. Because, again, it's just describing the state 
of beingness. Well, you can't say it because you don't know. You're, you're not one of them. <laughs> I am right now. I'm an indentured servant to you. To my idiocy. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> your inanity. Anyway, all right. Well, this has been the client five-fingered exploding spleen technique. And uh, this is the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker live on TikTok and on YouTube, but now no longer live on TikTok because nobody's really paying attention to it. On I've been anyway. Drunken Master Greg. Thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, you should learn that technique, Greg. I, I'm pretty good at it, I'm sure. All right, and I want to thank the guys from Law Offices, from Law Offices, from, from the adjunct office of the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, Bicker in North Dakota. Notice the Happy Hour News Team. Thanks for tuning we'll in, guys. And, and I apologize to everybody else for referring to the Happy Hour News Team. For anybody else who watches this in the future, check those guys out. They're entertaining. They have uh, the news that was something or other, whatever their slogan is. Um, the news you didn't knew you needed or... The news that basically involves masturbation. I think that's really what their tagline is. So, all the news that's fit to <laughs> to jack off to. <laughs> <laughs> that's their new slogan. <laughs> all the news that's fit to jack off to. <laughs> all right, we're gonna stop the live stream on YouTube right now. And uh, this is Matt and Greg with Drunken the law Master, offices Greg. of Quibble Squabble Baker. God, I hope I recorded this anyway. <laughs> Yes, I did. Good night, everybody. Your consultation with the law offices of Quiddle, Squabble, and Picker has ended. You may pay your retainer at www.qsblah.org. Please exit to the right of the water cooler and grab a candy from the front desk. We hope to see you again soon, but you need to leave now. I said leave. Why don't they ever listen? Get out. Get out. <laughs>